welcome to how to grow a garden. It's becoming a trend. I think I shall just be known as the one with the bad hair. <laughs> because honestly, I have no time to deal with hair things. It's just, that was 10 years ago. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm, I'm in my polytunnel. <clears throat> I'm in one of three. Somehow this has turned into chicken math and one just keeps multiplying. I started out with a very small one. It's a half polytunnel and I bought that a few years ago and I've been using it religiously. Um, it's amazing. It's great. It's way, way, way too small. It's also a half so it sticks up against a building, which I like uh, because it has a little more support in the wind, but again, too small. So we went with, oh, and I had a really big one once one time and that just got blown over in the wind. So we learned from that experience. Uh, so I went with this one this year. This is 11 feet long, six feet wide. I mean, it's quite tiny as far as flimsy polytones. It's quite flimsy, but it does work. Um, it's probably a little too, too loud in here. I'm sorry for that, but it does work. Um, it's definitely keeping the plants warmer and uh, protected and all that good stuff. Our last frost is the 1st of June. So, and of course we're not in the 1st of June yet. Um, at least where I am <laughs> at the time of recording this, I'm not the 1st of June. So all of these things need to be protected a little bit more. Now, a lot of them are hardy to here. Like this one is yarrow and it will be perfectly fine. In fact, these is, this is yarrow that I propagated. Much of stuff, much of the plants in here I either started from seed way back in January, February in order to have it this big now, um, or I pulled it out of the garden and um, did root divisions and uh, stool layering and cuttings and all that good stuff. So in other words, I propagated the plants. So the yarrow, this lovely one. This one was um, pulled out and I have it in pots too. So the pot stuff is actually ready to go if anybody wants some. Um, but this is uh, pink yarrow. It's not necessarily the medicinal. It does have slight medicinal properties, but it's not like the white stuff, which is the true medicinal yarrow. <clears throat> but it's beautiful and I really love it and I wanted more. So I have that. We have trays or I have trays and trays of things that I've started this teeny tiny. Uh, for example, this one is strawberries. Itty Bitty Strawberry started from seed, um, and I think there's five or six of them here. So that will be really fun. This is a new experiment for me. It's been years since I've started strawberries from seed, and I know that it'll take many years before they're big. Also have them, of course, outside. Um, I have some here. Nice, big, normal strawberries for all those strawberry lovers. These need to go in the garden soon. Um, yeah, okay, so we have things like Brussels sprouts, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, kale, broccoli. We have fennel. We have eggplants. We have zucchinis. This one's looking a little worse for wear, but she's quite happy otherwise. Plant world. I have lots and lots of sweet William. Um, poppies. Uh, asparagus. This is a beautiful patch of asparagus. I started from seed and it's doing really well. It all needs to go outside and be potted up. And you can see it's just in these little, little boxes. So each one of these needs to go into obviously a, a bigger pot um, with lots of manure. Now the way I do my gardening is I start everything. I start all the seeds in little itty bitty, um, what are they called? Pod thingies. And then they get up to a certain stage. And if I have time, I can get around to it, but there's so many that I've been just totally running out of time. Um, but then I can take them from that and put them into something like this, into a bigger pot. Now you can see that the roots are already coming through. So that needs to be potted up again into a bigger pot. Or in this case, since this is Cosmos, and I have tons and tons, um, I love Cosmos. They're one of my favorite flowers, or definitely up there with my favorite flowers. Um, it's a necessary component to a good British English garden, I think. Uh, maybe a English cottage garden in this case. Um, so once their roots start coming through, I will either pot them up again into a bigger, container if I don't have time, if it's not warm enough to put them outside, or in the case of the Cosmos, I can put them outside anyway, because outside all my baby Cosmos are already started. They self seeded and they're up about an inch. So that tells me that even if we do get frost, they should be okay because the plant has decided on its own that it's warm enough. Ah, what else is in here? Man, I mean, there is so much. I have lettuce, zucchinis, cabbages. No, I said that. <laughs> I have lettuce, zucchinis, um, squash of all sorts, big ones and little ones and medium sized ones and summer squash and winter squash and crooked neck squash and 
patty pans, which are by far my favorite squash. I think they're absolutely amazing. They're small enough. You can chop them in a few pieces and fry them up and they're just gloriously wonderful. Some things I'm growing that are maybe a little more unique would be burdock. I know you're gonna think that's nuts, right? No, um, in Asia, they actually grow burdock and they harvest the root just like you would harvest carrots. Now for me, um, I, having a little bit of a medicinal background, being that I'm currently in school for that, um, burdock has uh, obviously medicinal uses that is kind of important. I also have lots of peppers. Um, <laughs> now I didn't really name, I didn't, I, didn't, uh, I didn't label my peppers, I just wrote peppers. So I don't think I'll be selling peppers per se, but you know, who knows? Uh, watermelons that are still small now, it is still early. The thing is that we, our temperatures here are going to skyrocket in no time. And they were really high. Last week we had um, 30 for a few days. So things like watermelon, I'm gonna grow out in the polytunnel and not this one, but a different one where they're planted directly in the ground and they will do really, really well. They will just explode. Hopefully I'll get watermelons because trying to grow watermelons in this country and this, you know, where it's zone 5B is not nearly as easy as it was back in Germany in zone 7. So here we have um, pepper hot sauce blend. So we know those are hot. Uh, if I take a few of these things, I can show you some other stuff. This is spinach. It's a very small thing of spinach. Now I have more spinach, not in here, but I did... I did pot it out recently, so I have an entire tray of spinach. These guys are, are nice and big though and doing well. Um, spinach likes to be cold, so you definitely don't want to keep it in a polytunnel for too long. For the most part, I'm keeping the colder things under the table and near the floor because obviously that's going to be the coldest spot in the greenhouse, so they're not super warm and just wilting and bolting and dying on me. Um, so on the floor, I have the cabbages and the cauliflowers and the broccolis and the lettuce. They also want to be cold. Obviously the spinach. I also have a huge variety here of uh, coriander, which... I can't pick up because they're not actually potted up into, into pots I can move. They're still in the biodegradable pots. Now, as far as the biodegradable pots, I always use them for my initials. Let's see if I can pick one up. If I'm really gentle. I like to do this because um, the, I mean, it feels like maybe it's a little wasteful and I don't have to and whatnot, but, but some plants like peas do not like to be disturbed. And if you can grow them, there's a chicken out here. If you can grow them in a biodegradable pot uh, like this, then you can plop that pot immediately into a bigger container. And I just remove the very top rim so that's not sticking up. And then I can plot it again into one of these containers and it can grow on. In other words, I'm not actually at any point disturbing its roots. And that for a lot of seedlings is the make it or break it. So while they will be okay if you disturb their roots, for the most part, you do set them back. So it does take them a little bit of time to recover from that initial trans transplanting. Um, but like I'm saying, here's a good example. So we went from, you know, from the biodegradable pot into a plastic pot. And you can see the difference too, because in the biodegradable pot, it's still small. It doesn't have a lot of soil. That's seed starting soil, so it's pretty bare and almost nothing's in it. Whereas this one um, was then potted up with sheep manure, which being that I'm on a small holding um, with my goats and pigs and other such things, the sheep manure I did bring in last year because the goat stuff wasn't ready. It is my definitely ready this year. Um, but that's the best for me is to always just use well rotted vintage compost, vintage manure, all mixed together and then the plants just seem to go crazy. So again, look at the size of this one, looking really beautiful. Nice fat stem. It's not super tall. You don't want plants that are super tall. You want them stubby, but fat. That's your best, you know, good solid base. If they're long and, and, and leggy, like they're reaching for the sky, there's a good chance that they will get stem rot, fall over, and just die on you. And that definitely happens. It happens to me too. Um, if I put a cover on it and I forget about it, if there's too much moisture, uh, if there's any um, uh, fungus or anything in the soil, there's a lot of things that can affect stuff. So you have to be careful with your, with your moisture. Um, this, this is a wisteria I'm super crazy excited about. 
Um, I, you might remember I grew wisteria in Germany and it was beautiful. It was tall. It went all across my, my carport and my potting area, which is all wisteria. So I got two of them. Now my greenhouse is not finished. I don't mean the polytunnels. I mean the actual potting studio greenhouse is not finished. Um, I've made a few alterations. I want to put a door in the back which is gonna become the front. Right now, the whole thing is kind of facing east, so like the beautiful part of the building is facing east, whereas the uh, west side is just a straight solid wall. And I'm gonna put a door in there, so I've altered it, I've taken out some pieces. Um, tomorrow, Bo will be coming over, and he's going to help me put some footings in and kind of <laughs> maybe rework some of my work a little bit, although I think what I did was good. Um, we need to, I need two people to um, lift the greenhouse and it's quite the greenhouse so that'll be fun uh lift it and put two giant footers under where the door pillars are going to be so where the um oh what are they called the jacks the jacks are your pillars that hold your door up and there's going to be obviously some kind of footers under that which aren't there right now because i can't get it under you can't lever it up and shove a giant footer underneath with one person. So he's going to come tomorrow. We're going to try to put that together and then we'll cut out the bottom and have an actual door and build some kind of door for the greenhouse. Um, in the meantime, it's, uh, it's a super awesome space and I'm really happy to show you guys what it looks like and what's going on. It's not quite there. Also, I'm going to have um, glass on the walls and not plastic. The plastic is still up and sometimes it bugs me. Occasionally I look at it and go, Whoa. But other times it just blends right in and I don't notice. Um, so, oh, oh, that was the point, right. So the wisteria, I would like to plant and have it grow up and over and everything. But because I'm not done making my alterations on the greenhouse, I will put the wisteria, wisteria with the W, I'll put the wisteria in a really big pot, both of them, separate pots so they don't get all tangled up together. And then uh, maybe with some canes and I'll just let them grow for this season. And when we're all done, the wisteria, the roses, there's some climbing roses in here, um, and what else? The wisteria roses, clematis, they're all going to go onto the greenhouse in different spaces. Um, there's also, um, there's also grapes. So that'll be fun too. And the grapes have grapes. They've got little baby grapes on them. So way down here on the floor, um, let me show you what this is. This is horseradish. I mean, it's the prettiest thing. Look at, look at these two types of leaves. It's got the round leaves and it's got the, uh, what are they called? The ribbed leaves right there. It's just so pretty. Horseradish. Horseradish is really, really important. I use it a lot in fire cider, which is, um, which is a medicinal medicine you can use for coughs and colds and anything. It kind of kicks, uh, kicks a cold in the butt is really the idea. And you use almost anything you can find that's hot horseradish, um, super crazy hot peppers, uh, tons of onions, spicy onions. Um, so maybe not like, you know, just sweet onions, but spicy, uh, lots and lots of garlic and a few other things, lots of, um, um, apple cider, apple cider vinegar. And, uh, and you mix it all together and shake it, shake it every day for a few weeks and let it sit and ferment and burp it, which means open and close the bottle now and then. And it's just so awesome. But horseradish, um, last time I checked, it was, uh, it was, what was it? $8 per hundred grams. Now, <laughs> should we talk about the fact that food prices are going up? Because holy crap, food prices are going up. I have always been an avid gardener and I mean you guys know I've been on here since what 2011 I think there's a whole bunch of videos in the very beginning which I've removed so it kind of messes with the uh, how long if you go back and check also I have five channels not that I'm gonna tell you what they all are because a few I have been and they're old and you know are from the way back times we don't need to be watching them but regardless I've been on YouTube since 2011 and I've been gardening a garden um, I mean, be it a small one in the very beginning, but since I was 18, maybe, I probably planted my first little tomato patch right outside my bedroom window so I could open the window and grab the tomatoes as I, I was down on the first floor and I could reach, actually, I was, I was slightly in the basement, so I could reach out my window and grab a tomato and then bring it back in and lie in bed and eat tomatoes like while I was doing homework. It's perfect. Um, so yeah, I've been growing forever, but 
that being said, I'm so concerned about the prices of food and how this is going to affect people who don't have time to grow their own food, people who can't grow their own food, people who don't know how to grow their own food, people who, um, you know, mums with lots of children who, you know, God forbid are in situations where they spend all of their time working and, and even worse, they're in apartment buildings, they have no access to anything that they can grow in. Um, I, I can just, I can think of a lot of people that are in that kind of situation and it really, it really bothers me. So if you guys want to talk about that and give me your opinion, tell me what's been going on in your area, definitely give me a comment below because I would, I would love to have a little more chat about it. But as far as me personally, I'm just kind of grumpily keeping my mouth shut and not really saying anything because although it scares the crap out of me, I also don't want to stir anything. I would say if you're watching this, you're probably interested in gardening and that is a good thing. And if you can convince your friends or family to be interested in gardening too, or if you can grow enough that when they come knocking on the door and saying, oh my God, I can't afford groceries for my kids anymore. Um, you know, we have to eat pasta three nights a week that you can say no problem because here's what I got. Here's what I put up. Here's what I can hand you. Here's, you know, here are some plants and here's how to do it. And let's do it together. And if you've got space, I think that's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Okay. So back to the greenhouse. Um, we've of course got a few Mary Janes, which is now completely legal in Canada. If you only grow four plants, which I have only four plants. And, um, I know you're not going to believe me at all, but I really don't partake in the plants. I just really like growing them. It's so much fun to see how tall and how wacky you can get them and whatever. Um, we've got chives and lettuce. I said coriander, uh, parsley, the whole range of herbs are somewhere in here. Um, outside of the polytunnel, wow, it's way colder out here. It is green and gorgeous. I have peach trees. This is a peach. There's actually two of them. This is a peach coral star. Uh, you see that? It's in this lovely pot. And this is my little nectarine, which I really like. Oh, I'm so happy about this. Now I am again, I'm in zone 5B. So these things will not survive our winter, which is why they're in nice big fat pots. I repotted them into bigger pots. I will put them into one of these big, big pots soon. And, um, and they're going to come into the house and live in the greenhouse. Uh, sorry, in the sunroom in the winter, which will be perfectly fine because the, they're all dwarf and the, um, what is the last one? The nectarine is an extra dwarf. So it only gets to be three feet, I think like it's really tiny. So on this table, um, these things are not necessarily for, sta for sale, but I will be propagating them like always. And I'm going to take you over and show you my propagating uh, polytunnel in a second too. So these are, oh, let me see if I can go through them. Uh, black currants. There's, um, ah, I gotta do this quicker, right? Quicker, quicker. Okay. Black currants, gooseberries, red currants are here. This is white grapes the actual name of the grape. I am not exactly sure at the moment. And I think these are black raspberries. And in that polytunnel we just came out of, there was red raspberries. That's my, my selection of fruit for the moment. Um, did I guys, did I, did, I, did I show you guys what this looked like just recently? It was quite the mess, but I had started. Um, so I've got <clears throat> five beds in now and somewhat ready. This one is completely packed and uh, and planted and the next one as well in fact i think all three of these are i'm not sure about the middle and that last one i gotta think about that for a bit this one has potatoes and onions in it and then the next four back here are not planted at all also i have extended the garden all the way back to the path so you can see where the trees are um there's the berm back here which we're going to plant up um, with a few things i'll probably uh, probably no i want to plant squash and that kind of stuff on the berm and yes, I am going to need fencing for the deer and I have it. I just need to put it up. Also, I'm not really sure how this is the um, plastic fencing. It's the black plastic fencing. And I, I, I don't want to be drilling into the trees, obviously, but also I'm not sure if it would be best to use maybe a stapler to do that. Anyway, I will fill this in, cover it uh, with some kind of deer fencing and, uh, and then the deer won't eat everything I put out, but for now they're okay. So we've got this berm in the front. Now, when I use the word berm, what I mean is 
Um, it's a built-up Hugo culture, and I just feel like Hugo culture is too long, so I call it uh, like a wood and grass dirt berm. <laughs> But that's what this is. This is a Hugo culture here, and then there's another one in the back. If I spin around, you'll see. In fact, let me do that slowly so you guys don't get too seasick. Oh, see, there's the greenhouse. This is the back of the greenhouse, which will be the front soon. Um, second, third polytunnel, second polytunnel, third one's still in a box. Um, and then all of these beautiful yellow paths here. It's like the uh, yellow brick roads, so the yellow paths. These are all of the perennial beds that go all the way from the driveway. I mean, man, this is a huge, huge area now. It comes in from the driveway and it comes all the way up here at some point. Brings you right up to the greenhouse and then spills over into what will be the vegetable garden. Oh, I gotta change arms. Wow. You'd think it's such a tiny little phone wouldn't be so incredibly heavy, but it is. Okay, um, so what am I missing? And I still haven't shown you guys the greenhouse. Jeepers, there's so much to talk about. Uh, the leaves have already come off. The leaves have obviously come out. It looks just amazing. So yeah, these beds over here are gonna continue all the way to here-ish, to this path that goes through. And then this part, which I've been working on just recently, this was yesterday in the, the last few days work, is I want to um, flatten this down and make a tiny meadow uh, full of berries and some dwarf fruit trees. So that'll be at the very edge. This is a really neat space because it already has a lot of opening. Can you kind of make that out? There's, there's a good amount of light that comes in. So in the morning when the whole garden looks pretty dark because of the way the trees, I mean, I am in the forest. This is forest gardening at its best and trying to figure out how to do vegetables in the forest. Whew, it's tricky, that's for sure. Uh, but this space glows. So I've been working on trimming it and lowering the trees, uh, taking out some of the shrubs and kind of opening it up so that it really glows. And then I think it'll be so beautiful to sit in the house and be able to look out at the glowing, you know, little dwarf cherry trees and other such things that will be back here. Um, this is the berm. We're just gonna walk, we'll walk past it and I'll show you from the other side back of the polytunnel, the beds, the greenhouse. This is my little half polytunnel. And the third one, I think I'm gonna put it here at the end of these beds. I'm not sure. I do need to pollard some of these trees. There's not many. I know it looks like a ton, right? But right in there, there's like three trees that just need to come down by half. So it's not a big deal. It comes down by half, they still leaf out. They still become like more lollipop kind of trees. And they look really good in no time. In fact, if you look around most of the, I mean, I know it's really hard to see, but most of my trees I have pollarded in the, uh, in the perennial garden back here for sure. I mean, even here, see these stumps, these are all gonna be like, just imagine little lollipoppy trees on all of these in no time at all. Like by next year, you'll, you won't notice. So that will bring more light in. So then I can get away with putting a polytunnel here in this space. Um, <laughs> it's really weird, I think, or interesting, or to try to explain, I'm in the middle of the forest, there's absolutely no light, this is where I'm going to grow vegetables, and people come and they're like, okay, sure, that's what you're doing, good luck with that, <laughs> but luckily, you know, they come back and it's starting to look more and more like something, certainly back here. Last year, this was an unusable space, in fact, just, um, well, I mean, at the beginning of this video, you'll know. I'm trying to, trying to, to flatten this area alone. Wow, that was a, that was a back-breaking challenge. So if we walk through the greenhouse, I'll just give you a little wrap around here. This will be the front. Um, this used to be in the middle, and I took it out, so you can see that the middle now has this nice um, opening to it and it's gonna be all the way through front to back open. I'm gonna close the right and left, although I don't know when, probably not this year. I need to play with it a little more. Um, and my next biggest challenge, which I'm kind of walking through in my head, is I wanna put a farm stand down at the road. I don't really want people to have to come all the way in. I think it's harder to get people to leave their cars or to leave the main road, but I would like to be able to put out definitely vegetables when I have a glut and I have extras. I'd also love to be able to go down there and put out 10 or 15 different um, 
uh, perennials that I'm propagating or vegetables that I happen to have that I'm growing and just have an honor system. Um, we also have eggs. So it'd be really neat to put out some eggs. I'm not expecting anything. In fact, I think in my area, I'm more expecting things to just disappear. And I'm pretty okay with that. I think, you know, I'm incredibly, well, not myself, but we're all incredibly privileged to live in the West, uh, to have so much abundance, to have so much green, to have, I might even have a well, and I still somehow am surviving with, um, with the ponds and water off the roof and just having that ability to capture water. Like we're just so unbelievably privileged. So I am very much okay with um, anybody who comes by and I mean, I might just write something that says, you know, if you need it, take it. And if you can, this is what it costs. But um, if you don't, if you can't, then just take it anyway, because I'd rather people eat than worry about, you know, paying me three or four dollars for, for a plant or for a few vegetables, because it's just, it's, we all need to eat. I think it's really important. Anyway, I digress. Let's get back to the point. <laughs> I want a farm stand for sure. Um, and I'm back and forth on when I'm going to build it and what it's going to look like, but I have some ideas. I think it would be a really great idea. Uh, to get that out there just to you know there's just so much and once I start potting these things up like this is a great example this tray um, holds what was it 70 I think little balls maybe not maybe it's only 40 it's less if they're in the the larger squares but it's quite a number I should count them and I'll put it on for you um, and each one of these little tomatoes is three so when I get around to um, propagate to potting them up we have Roma tomatoes Anna Asa uh, this oh, old old German tomato and the peach tomato and then I think way back here is um, uh, there's two in here that might actually tell me what they are beef steak and the middle is more old German tomatoes so once I get around to potting these and like I said each one has three in fact, let's pull that one out. Like this has, yeah, three for sure. Four, five, woo, one, two, three, four, six. There's six tomatoes in there. That's gonna be too much. I won't have enough room uh, to do anything with that, which is why I have my second large polytunnel in the box still, but it's gonna come out here in no time um, and be set up because that needs to be able, I wanna, let me say this again. The second polytunnel, I want to be able to plant directly in the ground. Just have two beds, a nice tiny path, maybe something I can get the wheelbarrow in just for the easiestness. The, the <laughs> convenience of being able to bring the wheelbarrow in and out uh, and filling the beds. But um, I can plant directly into the ground. It'll be a permanent structure. I will take the plastic off in the winter and simply put it back on. Um, and our winters are pretty short. I don't have to take the plastic off until November and I can put it back on as early as middle of February, maybe March, and then be really careful about how much snow we get and knocking the snow off, but that will help warm it up. And of course, if I fill it with uh, manure, warm, not vintage manure, so the pretty fresh stuff from the pigs or from the goats, um, it will create heat so that I can put the beds, uh, the trays, sorry, of, of veggies uh, seedlings <laughs> on top of those hot beds. That's what it's called. It's called a hotbed or hotbed composting. I can do that and then the heat from the bottom will heat the trays. You put covers on top. Um, I'll show you this when I do it. I just, you know, it's pretty warm. Today it's cold, but it's been pretty warm, so I obviously wouldn't do it right now. Um, and as we come around the front, this is my little tool shed. I know I've shown you guys these things before. The door needs to be painted. I kind of like that it's like this because when you open it, it looks kind of neat. And this is the half tunnel. So this one, um, I'm going to move it to the house, to the east side of the house, which you won't see because it's tucked away in the back and it'll only really get light in the morning, but it'll be up against the house and have a little more protection. All that's in here are things that have been propagated, pulled out of the garden and are taking their time. So I have bush cherries, almond trees. This is a, this is a little dwarf almond. It had pink flowers, but they obviously dried up and died the moment I cut it all apart. Um, this is a, a little bush cherry. Um, some of these came from rain. Some of these came from Marcy. Uh, this is an amenity. 
Anemone, anemone, how do I say that? Amendi, anemone, bleh, never sure. Um, these are, what else is in here? This is um, a bleeding heart. This whole tray is bleeding hearts. They look like they're having a hard time, but they should green up soon. I know they're, see, this is why it's not in the main polytunnel, because otherwise my pictures are like, wow, what is all this weird stuff that looks like it's half dead? It's half dead because I chopped it up and took all of its roots off, and now it's repropagating itself. This is uh, Mangolia. That's not how you say that, is it? That's a country. It's Magnolia. Magnolia. M-A-G. Um, and they're doing really well. There's a bunch in here. Uh, they look like they've rooted. And I will show you guys how to propagate these things. Uh, the magnolias, this is, um, this is hydrangeas. Also look like they're doing really well, super happy. Um, again, I will show you how to propagate these in future and upcoming videos. Now that my greenhouse is happy and, and coming along, um, these are the amenities, anem anemones, anemones, what is, nah, never mind. Even if you write it below, I still say it wrong. <laughs> um, and bee balm, obviously, I love propagating bee balm. I have tons of it. Um, it's so pretty. This one, I think, is a lavender version of Monarda. This says rosy pink, and the other one says, says um, bee balm lavender. Um... What are you? What are you indeed? This one looks like a raspberry. Um, of course, I don't have it labeled. I don't label a lot of things. I do, but then I don't. But the thing is, once they're up, I totally recognize them. So I don't need to do write tons and tons of labels. But when they're small, you know, then I don't know what they are. So it's not the end of the world. <laughs> um, Mark wanted to... This is sweet. Mark, where are you? Mark wanted to move some ferns around, so we dug them up, stuck them in some water, and I want to put, uh, I think it's a great idea, I want to put maybe 10 or 15 or something by uh, Old Faithful over by the house where it's pretty dark and, and moist um, in that corner, and not many other things will grow except rhubarb and hostas. So I was gonna, you know, put some ferns there too. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. So this greenhouse is so tiny. I believe it's three feet from one side to the other. Let's see how, yeah. And it's got these three little shelves, which are really annoying because it's all built in, so I can't alter it. If it was just a space, I could build the shelves up myself. I could get them all the way to the top. I could really make it, well, better structured. But it requires this in order for the whole structure not to fall over. And it still looks like it's falling over. I mean, <laughs> look at this. This is... This is totally bending every which way. Now, in order to keep it up, because I just have it in the middle of the garden, in the middle of the floors, is I put some straps on it, and that means it's pulled a little tighter, and that's kind of promoting the whole bending part too. So I'm gonna take it to the house someday when I feel like that is a good idea, and it won't be today, because today is cold and wet, which is why my hair is wet, because I was it was raining cats and dogs this morning, and I was out here, um, trying to get the baby goats into the big paddock with the big goats and trying to keep the baby goats in there and then get them dry because they were wet because we walked there and anyway. Okay, so this will be the front of the greenhouse. Now I need to move the windows um, and when I'm continuing to build raised beds, I want them to match the windows so I can use the windows to make cold frames, of course. Um, and then this is all going to be glassed in eventually with two big French doors right here in the middle. So I've probably mentioned this before, but the overall idea of the garden, the concept, is that it's supposed to look like the flowers are coming to a meet and greet, if you can imagine such a thing. Like they're they're coming out of the forest. So, um, and since, uh, interestingly enough, since I covered all the beds with this beautiful yellow, um, yellow mulch, which is just uh, shavings and 
it's really wood shavings more than wood chips but regardless which is great because it compacts really well and it seals it out so it keeps the moisture in it keeps the uh, weed seeds from germinating so definitely like that so um, great idea but because I covered all the beds in this beautiful yellow stuff uh, this wood chips you can finally see it you can see where the beds are so instead of me just always explaining and saying oh it's gonna look like this is gonna look like that people can finally see now this year there will be flowers in all these beds last year there wasn't flowers in all the beds a lot of them were by annuals or perennials that were taking a long time to come up to come true you know to grow but um, this year you can really see what's going on which I think is so cool so the idea is that it should look in the end like almost like fingers how the or like flames maybe but going the opposite direction instead of going out into the woods at least my idea is that all these plants are, are out in the woods wild and they're coming together into this giant opening right in the middle coming out from the woods and meeting in this nice dense area so this is the center kind of around these tables the panels will eventually go but the um, center garden is the stuff right behind me which I did in uh, the beginning of COVID so 2020 and then 2021 um, was all of this everything just south of this path in the middle and you see how far it goes this is uh, this is a giant Hugo culture I like to call it a berm and there's another one here that goes all the way around the back so there's um there's a a lane we always have our driveway but then it tees at the end and there's a laneway and the laneway goes all the way around the perennial garden including the vegetable garden at the back and then comes to the house and comes straight out so that's this coming from where's my house back there it's this way <laughs> coming from my house so this yeah so this thing it actually wraps this way in and then that way back to the house and then it wraps around this way so it's kind of like a giant s which is interesting and i thought about that it goes this way and this way and then all the way back so um yeah and all the way around and the berm that's what i'm talking about right the berm is going to meet up way back where the polytunnel is i'm about away you can kind of see it um where the vegetable garden is and that's the greenhouse right there so this is what it looks like we're almost at the end of may um pretty excited to see what it's gonna look like soon it's so much work it's killing my back mostly the goats are killing my back because having to pick them up every day and toss them back in their house is exhausting i would like to be able to fill all the holes and also have them happy and want to stay in there which is really hard because bruno and bella don't like the babies so much so they keep kicking them out and of course you don't want them to um be getting bruised and stuff so we regularly remove them from the paddock and give everybody a break but I think when that's done uh, my back will feel a little better and uh, you know I'll be back at it I mean that being said I'm still constantly constantly at this so it's you know it's a full-time passion I guess it's not really a job unless my nursery goes crazy and takes off which you know it's doing really well but uh, it's definitely a passion for sure I love it so much Can she wiggle through here? Maybe. Sure, if she pushes hard enough. I don't know. Look at that. That's too bad. Where do I give you a kiss? Can you see them? Yeah. Bella. Are you keeping them in there, Bella? That's not nice. I need to put down wood chips on all the paths. I need to get the stumps out. I need to remove the rocks. I need to plant up more beds. I need to propagate more things, divide more plants, get them into the greenhouse and get them back out here. Um, I need to pot up my tomatoes and all the other vegetables in all the rooms and all the 
polytunnels. I need to get the third Pundit polytunnel up and ready. I need to build more raised beds and fill them. I fill them with uh, manure from the pigs is the initial bottom fill. Uh, cardboard, then manure, then any leaves or scruff that's lying around that goes on top and or on top of that. And then um, soil, which is not really soil, it's vintage. I showed it to you a little while ago, didn't I? The vintage um, compost from sheep. And then the last layer is wood chips or wood shavings, which you know, all this lovely yellow stuff, which keeps um, the weeds from settling and keeps things from coming up. And more importantly than weeds is it keeps the moisture in, which right now doesn't seem like a big deal because it's crazy green. Look at this, green and gorgeous and just absolutely beautiful. But as soon as, well, in a few days, in a few weeks, as soon as it really stops raining, it's gonna be pretty intense. And then it's gonna get hot and dry and with the whole climate up and down wackadiness, who knows what happens. So I want to keep as much moisture as I possibly can in that soil. So I need to build raised beds um, for the vegetable garden and like a whole host of other things, not to mention finishing buildings and finishing the greenhouse and oh, making a stand at the end of the road. I gotta really think about what it's gonna look like. I think I might uh, hit Pinterest for that and get some ideas of different small and big and fun options. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. I'm thrilled that you're here. It's so much fun to do this with you and to be able to document all of my crazy journeys. To be able to go back so far, like all the way to 2011 or so and see what I've done all these years, it's just the coolest thing ever. So I really appreciate that I've had this opportunity to do it and that you guys are interested in watching and you like it. Feel free to give me comments and ask me questions. I do check them and I do try to write back. Um, and don't forget to subscribe if you would like to follow along this channel is going to turn into more of a vlog slash homesteading slash what's up with all my animals that pool is there because we're catching the water off the roof um kind of channel um, but i will still be doing how to's like i've always done because they are really fun and there's um there's just so many plants that i can i can teach you guys all about so thanks for watching i'm scarlet and i'll see you in the next episode toodaloo guys